For placing families in Revit, the first thing that we need to do is to navigate to the floor plan in which we're going to be placing those. So in this case, let's start off from level two. So I'm just going to go here to the project browser, uh, find the level two in the floor plans and just double click. That will open up the level two floor plan. I'm just going to zoom in and now let's start placing families. Now to place families, you're going to be using mostly the component tool. Now the component tool is located here on the architecture tab on the build panel. Now it does have this drop menu option, but don't worry about that for now. We can just click here on top and that will open up the place a component tool. Okay, so for placing families uh, in Revit here, as you can see, we have this big sofa and we can change actually the family or the furniture that we're placing here in the properties panel. So if I just open up the drop menu, here we have all of the families that are loaded in or all of the furniture in this case. Uh, now, if I scroll down over here, you're going to notice that we don't really have much when it comes to, well, supplying our bedrooms with all of the necessary furniture. So if the appropriate families haven't been loaded in, you have to load them in. And for that, we have to navigate here to the uh, modify tab, find the mode panel and just click on load family. So I'm just going to click there and that will open up the US metric family library. Now, if you're using the Imperial system, you can just step back one folder by clicking on this button here, and then you can open up either the US metric or the US Imperial. In this case, I'm just going to stick with the US metric. Uh, now, because we're adding furniture to bedrooms, it makes sense to go straight here into furniture and then uh, find beds. And then here, let's see, what do we have on offer? So uh, when you want to take a look at families that you have over here, the best option is to select the first one as I did. So just click once and then you can use the arrow keys to toggle through selection. So you can see what does each of these look like here in this little preview window. Now I'm just going to go with the standard bed. So uh, while this is highlighted, I'm just going to click open and there we go. As you can see now, this has been loaded into the project. Uh, now, when placing families, uh, what you can do is just hit the space key and that will rotate the family. I want to place one bed over here, just like that. One bed over here, maybe like that. And I want to have one here in the master bedroom. Now for the master bedroom, I want to use a larger bed. Now, if I go here to the properties panel and open up the drop menu, you will notice that this particular bed has a few options. So we have a twin, a double, a queen and a king. So let's go with the king size bed. I'm just going to hit the space key again to rotate that around and we can now place it. So let's just place it over there. There we go. Looks perfect. Now I'm just going to hit the escape key a couple of times to exit out of that. Okay, now it's time to add a few more families. Uh, so for example, uh, let's add a desk over here. This, let's say this is a children's room and it makes sense to add a desk there. Now, luckily, when you open up a, the architectural template in Revit, you are going to get a desk loaded in. It's pretty much the only furniture family. So you can go just here to component, open up the drop menu in the properties panel. And here we have that M desk. Now let's go with the student one. I'm just going to rotate it around once by hitting the space key. And then I'm going to place it here alongside this wall. Now you will notice when you come close to a wall, it will highlight in blue. That means that it will basically glue this, uh, glue this table or desk uh, to that wall. And that's okay. We want to place it against that wall. Okay, so once we have those two in place, let's just hit the escape key to exit out of that. At any point, you can select these families. You can move them around either with your cursor. Now let me just go back. Or you can select them and just notch them in place by using the arrows. So here I want to move it a bit closer to the uh, window. So I'm just using the up arrow to move that around. Okay, so now we do have to add some sort of a chair here. So I'm just going to go and load in a chair family. Now for loading in uh, families, you don't have to go to the component tool. You can actually load them in uh, separately by going here to insert and then going to load family. It's just a different way of approaching this. So I'm just going to go back one level here and then find the seating. And then let's see, we have this desk chair that sounds good and it does look good. It, it's appropriate. So let's just hit open and place it. Now, in order to place it, we do have to go back to the architecture tab and start the component tool again. And now you will see that we have a chair. I'm just going to hit the space key to rotate it around, place one here and then 
let's place one here as well. I'm just going to hit the escape key a couple of times to exit out of that. Okay, let's see what else can we add over here. So for example, here we have this master bathroom, we have another one here. Uh, so we, it does make sense to add all of the plumbing fixtures. Now to load those in, again, you can go here to the component tool, go to load family, and let's go back one step. Now this is still the furniture folder, and in this case, the furniture folder does not hold all of the, all of the families for plumbing. You have to go back one folder, find the plumbing folder, so here we go. Let's go to architecture, let's go to fixtures, and then here we can choose from these. So for example, let's add a water closet, that's probably the first thing to add, and then I'm just going to go with the domestic 3D one. Uh, just in order to, if I want to make some 3D renderings, it makes sense to use the 3D version. Let's just hit open, and now let's place it. Again, you, we, you will be using the space key to orbit it around, and let's place one here, and let's perhaps add one more over here. There we go, hit the escape key a couple of times to exit out of that. Moving on, let's add a bathtub, so for that, let's go here to component, go to load family, and then let's go back one folder and choose bathtubs. Now here we have this, let's see, this freestanding 3D bathtub, I really like the look, but when I hit open, and if I want to place it here, let's hit the space key again, you will see that it's quite small, we have room for a larger one, but if I go here to the properties panel and open up the drop menu, we don't really have the option to choose a larger one. So what I'm going to be doing is just modifying this family really quickly. So you can do that by going here into edit type. Now, not all families will have this option, but uh, if, uh, if they do, you can change the dimensions of the family over here. Now, before changing the dimensions, it makes sense to duplicate the type by clicking here to duplicate. And because we don't want to add perhaps the precise measurements, what we can do is just call this one, uh, let's call this one a tub. There we go, I think this is enough. Hit OK. Next, let's change the length instead of 150 to maybe 172. And let's get rid of that number 5. And here, instead of 76, let's go with 96. Click OK. And now you will notice that this is quite a larger bathtub. So I can just place it here. Or actually, let's go back into edit type. I think this is a bit too wide. Let's go with 86. And here, let's go with 82. I think this is better. Click OK. There we go. So I'm just going to place one here, and then I can place another one over here. And I'm just going to hit the escape key a couple of times. Uh, finally, I'm just going to go here to component, and let's finish this up by adding the sink. So go to load family again, one step backward, uh, go into sinks. There we go, we have this vanity around. Hit open, and let's place it. Now I'm just going to hit the space key once to rotate that. Let's place two here, but as you can see, we can't really see those. They are placed, but they are not visible. So let me just hit the escape key a couple of times, and let's make a cross selection like this. So you will notice that these are below this here stand. So this is something like a, a little stand for our, or a little table for our sinks. So what I'm going to do is just hold the shift key. You will see that this minus sign appears next to the cursor. I'm just going to remove this, uh, this stand from the selection, and now we only have sinks. And here it's going to say plumbing fixtures too, so we've selected both of those. Now the top of this counter, so this counter on which it's standing, it's actually 100 centimeters tall. So let's just change this height from 75 to 100, click apply, there we go, it moves straight to the top. Now, in order to copy it and keep the same height, I'm just going to select it, go here to the Modify tab, go to Copy, and let's just copy it over here. Hit the Escape key a couple of times, and there we go. So, we have completed the upstairs uh, furniture. Now, of course, you can add any additional elements if you want, or you can just keep it like this. Now, let's move over downstairs, so let's go back into level 1. Now here on this level one, the sofa is actually not included with the families in Revit. Now, if you want to add some families or some furniture or any elements within Revit that are not included either uh, here inside of your project or when you go to component and go to load family, if you cannot find it over here, 
in that case you can find those families on some websites for example Revit City is one uh, BIM object is another one so just try searching for those try searching for Revit families online and you will find websites to download those they are usually free and you just need to sign up at the website and that's pretty much it so uh, here uh, I, I'm talking about all of these because if I go back here to component and then go here to the uh, drop menu scroll all the way up and here we have this sofa that I got from Revit City and it looks really good and it works with this model so I'm just going to hit the space key once and then I'm just going to place it over here just like that hit the escape key a couple of times and there we go now the problem with this sofa is that this larger part where you can kind of spread out it's uh, up here uh, on the left side of the sofa and I actually want to have it on the right side I think it will look better to kind of close off this part of the living room so what I'm going to do is just select that go here to the modify tab go to the modify panel and then search for the uh, for the mirror tool with the pick access option mm is the shortcut now once you select this make sure to uncheck this copy option and then you come close to the sofa and here we get this middle line that's basically representing the center of this family so once I click there it will immediately just mirror it to the other side so there we go we have the sofa that's uh, actually facing the direction that we want now we're just going to move it around a little bit there we go I think this looks perfect and let's just add maybe a couple of more chairs so for example for that what you can do is just go to component go to load family and here I'm just going to go back a few folders just to go back to US metric go to furniture find seating and we have this Corbu uh, chair I really like this one and also we need to add some sort of a chair for the dining room so I'm just going to hold the control key and add this to the selection as well this will work perfect for our dining room so let's just hit open there we go and we can just place a couple of these sofas here hit the escape key and we're done and finally just for the dining room I'm going to go here to the component tool open up the drop menu and then search here for our a table family and let's pick out one of these perhaps this one hit the space button to orbit that around and just place it here next for the chairs I'm just going to hit the uh, escape key once and then open up the drop menu and then let's search for that chair now it might be a bit hard to find here we go chair now if it's hard to find families over here especially when you load in a lot of these you can find all of the same families down here in the project browser so if you scroll all the way down you go to families you expand this node and here they are really just categorized so it's a bit easier to find furniture open that up and here we have some chairs this is the one that we want to use so you can open up the drop menu select that chair itself and just drag it over now I'm just going to hit the space key a couple of times to orbit this around place one here one here and then one here now once you're done placing them I'm just going to hit the escape key a couple of times select all of these again go here to the mirror tool and in this case I'm just going to leave the copy checked on I, I'm going to come to the center of the table which will give me the center line and when I pick that it will just place these on the other side and there we go we have our perfect dining room now if you want to move this table make sure to select both the table and the chairs and then you can move it either like this using the little arrow keys or you can use the move tool if you want to be extra precise Hey guys, thank you for watching this tutorial. Now, if you don't want to miss any of my other tutorials I upload frequently, just make sure to subscribe and also hit that notification bell icon. Uh, also, if you're interested in some advanced Revit courses, if you want to learn Revit, or if you're interested in just complete beginner, intermediate, or advanced courses, check out my website, balkanarctic.com. There I have numerous courses on Revit and the Autodesk Revit 
beginner to intermediate level course uh, covers pretty much everything that you need to get started with Revit. Uh, we start off by covering just the basic topics uh, about building information modeling and the whole introduction to Revit. It includes uh, four uh, projects uh, of varying complexity, but you will pretty much learn how to complete the project, the whole workflow, and how to produce all of the necessary uh, building documentation. And finally, we have a whole uh, segment on uh, each independent tool and feature in Revit. So whenever you start working on your own projects and get stuck anywhere, you can come back to this course and just check it out. Uh, so it's 16 hours of content and it's pretty much everything that you need to know for Revit. So check it out.